What do you think about the Early Years Foundation stage? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lou and this is Lily Rowe who hopefully will have a nice long nap so I can make this video. So a question I often get asked is does Forest School follow a curriculum? And well, basically the short answer is no, <laughs> no it doesn't um, because we are a learner-centred play-based ethos so we follow the needs and interests of the individuals that happen to be attending that particular forest school program so we're led by the participants however that's not to say that forest school doesn't link with and support existing uh, curriculums such as the national curriculum and the early years foundation stage which are what we have in the uk um, so sometimes <laughs> you might need to justify why are you spending this time outside in nature um, to the powers that be to head teachers to managers to governors even sometimes to parents and so i found it really useful to kind of map out where the links are from in terms of forest school and some of these statutory documents like the earliest foundation stage now in the early years it's quite, doft I mean, it dovetails beautifully for a school and good early years practice, kind of uh, pretty much <laughs> the same thing in many ways. Um, and that's because Forest School has originated from Scandinavian early years practice. So there's lots and lots of similarities. So that justification process is relatively easy in the early years foundation stage. Um, so I thought I'd make maybe a series of videos um, to show you how does Forest School link with the EYFS? In this video, we're gonna consider the four overarching principles of the Early Years Foundation stage and see how they link with Forest School practice. So these four things are unique child, positive relationships, enabling environments, and learning and development. And so these are the four kind of key principles that all early years practice should be shaped by these core things. So let's unpick these a bit and look a bit more closely at them. So firstly, the Early Years Foundation stage writes that every child is a unique child who is constantly learning and can be resilient, capable, confident and self-assured. So to me that sounds very similar to forest school practice at forest school we do recognize that each individual is unique uh, that has their own skill sets their own preferences their own strengths and weaknesses i mean forest school fundamentally is kind of like a humanist approach we recognize that each individual can uh, achieve self-actualization as in they can reach their full potential um, and everyone's capable of that but everyone is unique and has a unique set of gifts that they bring to the world uh, we also recognize that humans are naturally curious we're natural learners we're always learning there's lifelong learning beyond early years um, and we try to engage actively with that inherent desire to find out more about the world around us um, we focus our planning uh, at forest school through observing those individual unique learners and offering things in future sessions that we think will kind of stimulate their interest and curiosity so everything we do is based on the premise that people are unique and we tailor our programs appropriately so at forest school we don't have everybody all doing the same thing there are choices we go uh, in the moment following individuals curiosities so um, our planning is very flexible um, to reflect that. You know, we might have thought, oh, the kids were interested in the badger footprints last week, so maybe we'll do something badgery. But uh, this week, uh, somebody's 
found a mushroom or something that's that's started growing up and now their attention's over there so we kind of forget about our planning and we'll go to mushroom world <laughs> so unique child definitely we we are kind of in line with that at forest school uh, also in terms of that we recognize that learners are capable and they are resilient and again the outdoor environment is a fantastic place for that to uh, develop through real life interactions real life problem solving um, uh, real life experimentation there's you know materials to experiment with just lying around us the leaves the spiky chestnut casings the sticks the mud um, the stones they're all here for us to try stuff out um, and to learn um, and also to fail sometimes as well you know find out what doesn't work and be able to manage that that builds resilience that develops our capabilities so yes i would say forest school clearly recognizes that particular principle and supports it fully the next principle of the eyfs is that children learn to be strong and independent through positive relationships so again that sounds very similar to forest school we recognise that everything happens through positive relationships and that can be relationships with uh, other children at the session, it can be relationships between the practitioner and the children, it can be the relationship between the participants and the natural world, it could be the relationships that the individuals have with themselves. It's all about relationships at Forest School, that's how we discover more about ourselves and the world around us. Um, Forest School philosophy is kind of rooted in humanistic psychology that I mentioned before, particularly like the work of Carl Rogers, who um, is like the granddaddy of person-centered therapy in, in the therapeutic psychology kind of world. Um, and so, that's something that we cover on Forest School training in more depth and it underpins our way of working um, in that person-centered way uh, and how to build trusting relationships through non-judgment, through active listening, uh, through uh, emotional literacy techniques um, and also how to build community, how to uh, facilitate uh, a culture of acceptance and uh, support is all part of Forest School. So we, you know, we're trying to aim for a group of people, oh hello bubs, <laughs> a group of people coming together on a regular basis in the woods, non-judgmentally, no hierarchy, no one's better than anybody else. We want to accept people for who they are and the gifts that they bring and really grow and build those trusting relationships and of course at Forest School we've got the benefit of being out in nature uh, where nature can help us put perspective on our lives and understand how we are all connected to each other because we can see in nature we can see stuff happening like uh, the food chains like uh, you know the rains falling in the plants uh, rely on that water uh, and you know the cycles of life are happening all around us so we actually physically see and feel those relationships between us and everything else and everybody else as well. Um, we also out here, because it's a real life ever changing dynamic environment, we genuinely need people to ha perhaps help us do stuff, yeah? So like now it's raining, say I was at Forest School, I want to rig a shelter, I might need some help with that, I might need somebody to come and help, help hold the rope whilst I tie it or, you know, help throw the tarpaulin over it pull out the pegs you know there, there are uh, there are genuine situations where I might need to ask people for help which builds and grows relationships oh yeah also going through 
adversity together potentially really grows and strengthens relationships so again particularly in the winter time in the UK the weather can be cold and wet and you know sometimes that is uh, uh, that, that can grow camaraderie uh, camaraderie uh, within the group because you're going through experiences together it could also be you know adventures that the children initiate like say there's a, a stream or a, you know a small river or something and they decide to build a bridge and you know that there's that element of risk that helps gel the group together where they're um, you know where they genuinely need the support of each other to do whatever it is that they're doing um, so for a school a fantastic place to build positive relationships so I can definitely see that one and, oh, and of course the independence thing uh, that's also in that principle for a school ultimately is about people finding their power and being able to do things for themselves and, and the reason for a school so good at that is because it does focus on that emotional area of development in particular self-esteem emotional resilience uh, confidence and that all I guess underpins independence I've got to feel okay with myself I've got to have um, confidence in my own actions to be able to be independent um, and so yeah forest school can do that too so we're doing well we've got two so far <laughs> So the third principle in the EYFS is that children learn and develop well in enabling environments with teaching and support from adults who respond to their individual interests and needs and help them to build their learning over time. Children benefit from a strong partnership between practitioners and parents and our carers. So that one highlights again the importance of following the learner's interests and needs, which we've already talked about. It also is um, highlighting the importance of <coughs> learning over time and how learners learn, yeah, time to develop at different rates. And of course, Forest School recognises this, and that's why it's a long-term process with regular sessions through the seasons. So we recognise that things take time. We also recognise, because of the uniqueness of individuals, that people's learning and development happen at different rates and in different ways. And Forest School allows for that um, in its child-centred ethos. Ethos. And of course, enabling environments, well, you don't get much more enabling than, than out here, in my opinion. <laughs> There's something always going on in nature. You just have to sit and something will happen, you know, birds will start coming, you'll hear some sounds, the wind, the rain starts, the mud's there, there's puddles to jump in, there's sticks to pick up, there's leaves to throw, you know, there's stuff going on all of the time. And of course, it doesn't just stay like it is, it's constantly dynamic, it changes through the seasons, it changes through the weather, weather. It's not, you know, it's not like when you're inside the classroom and you have to change the displays each term. You don't need to do that out here, it changes itself constantly. It's a, it's a very enabling environment. There's sensory input, all of your senses are engaged not just your visual uh, sense you know there's you can smell things on the wind you can hear things you can you can even taste things potentially as long as you know what <laughs> what those things are before you put them in your mouth um, you know everything is engaged there's space out here so if you need to be physically active you need to run around you need to be loud you know you can do that out here without kind of causing disruption to others out here you know sometimes in the classroom it can be very difficult for children particularly little children who want to climb and jump and run and scream and shout and hullabaloo uh, you know you can't really do that in, a, in, in four walls it can be very difficult because um, other children might not want to do that they might want to be quiet and sit peacefully and uh, out here there's space for both you know you can have quiet spaces you can have loud spaces it's all fine out here it's it's enabling no matter what you want to do um, 
And of course, all of the natural resources are non-uniform and therefore uh, provide much more open play opportunities. So unlike, uh, you know, manufactured play equipment um, where everything is the same, like, you know, c compare like a kid's climbing frame to a tree, for example. So children want to climb and both of those things provide opportunities for climbing but if you compare a tree a natural tree to a climbing frame the tree being non-uniform provides lots more learning and development opportunities because the branches will be different thicknesses there'll be different spaces apart uh, you have to understand the difference between living and dead wood and make kind of risk judgments about it whereas a uh, climbing frame you know the rungs tend to be the same shape they tend to be the same distance apart uh, that you, you know you don't always have to worry about whether or not they'll hold your weight so yet again we've got evidence there that forest school supports enabling environments then finally the uh, fourth principle of early years is recognizing the importance of learning and development it says children develop and learn at different rates. The framework cover covers the education and care of all children in early years provision, including children with special educational needs and disabilities. So that's reminding us again that every child is unique and we are going to support those children appropriately. And, you know, at Forest School, we plan and treat everybody as an individual regardless of their needs or background so sometimes people ask me you know well how do you work with special education needs at Forest School and my answer usually was no different to working with anybody else um, because we kind of tailor the program for each individual so in a way we're we're not doing anything extra in terms of our planning and observations for those children with identified uh, educational needs. Um, we're just doing it for everyone. <laughs> so in that way, it's truly inclusive um, and enables people to fully participate regardless of their needs. Then, I mean, in terms of learning and development in general, I mean, Forest School, one of the principles is that it aims to support the holistic development of all learners. Uh, so development is core to the Forest School philosophy um, and particularly looking at that um, that fully rounded development, that holistic development where we're not putting um, a hierarchy on any particular skills or understanding that we're recognising the value of emotional development as well as cognitive development as well as linguistic development as well as physical development as well as spiritual development we're recognizing that for an individual particularly a younger individual that it's crucial to nurture all of those areas together because they all connect and interweave uh, with each other um, rather than kind of considering a hierarchy of subjects of course the early years foundation stage is much more holistic in terms of how they look at those areas of learning and development compared to say the, the national curriculum um, so we do see that echoed in the early years foundation stage um, and maybe in a future video we'll perhaps yeah we'll unpick how forest school uh, supports those different areas of learning and development uh, and and linking it to the earliest foundation stage if you'd like to you know let me know in the comments below if that would be of interest to you and we'll maybe make some more videos on this so we hope you've enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching do give us a thumbs up below if you uh, have enjoyed this video and we hope to see you in the next one <laughs> bye the EYFS has four principles that are all covered within forest schools. Linking them both is the key to justify why you should head to the trees. <laughs>